Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome back once again. My name is Jordan, also known as J Monster. I want to thank you for joining me for another Third Age Reforged replay battle, and today I have quite the doozy for you. This battle is Absolute Bedlam, and is a 4v4 on 0.96.1, and it was sent in to me by Celtic. So, big thank you to Apex Celtic for supporting the channel. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the army comes, then we can jump into the replay. Hope you guys enjoy it. Naturally, the first army we're going to look at today is the army of the, the player that sent in the replay, and this is the army of Apex Celtic, Celtic who is commanding the Haradrim. He's got some Haradrim Spearmen, a very large number of them, quite a quite a huge buffer in this because he's got a couple units of Mumakil. So he had to economize a little bit somewhere. So it looks like three, four units, uh, I'm thinking more like three of the Haradrim Spearmen. Then we have some Southrun Warband, who are another spear unit, but a key, key difference that they share with the Haradrim Spearmen is that they are armor piercing. And have a little bit better armor. I think I've got about five armor, which is uh, which is skirting the ceiling pretty well for the the Haradrim units. I think the highest armor they have is eight on their Black Serpent, so not a very uh, not a very well armored faction all around. Got some demons of the desert, body piercing javelins, very nasty. Muhan warriors mixed in with some South Ron pikemen. I'm not seeing a lot of archers, however, aside from a lone unit of uh, Hashar shadows, and of course we've got a unit of the Black Serpent bodyguards, which is going to be housing the general. And that is the general right there. Very close to what some of the reskins for Harada are going to look like, actually. Uh, if you guys are curious, go ahead and check out the Mod DB page. I believe Kyron Koma just posted three pictures there of the direction that he's going to be taking the Harada in, uh, in terms of overall uh, aesthetics, which is really cool. So I recommend you guys go and check it out. In any case, I think that just about does it for Celtic's army. So let's go ahead and move on now to one of his allies. We have another Harada force here being commanded by Corsaro93. He's brought a far different army. Uh, he's got some Southrun war or some Southrun pikemen, Southrun archers up front. Looks like about two units of the Southrun archers, uh, three units of the Harajim spearmen, and another company of the uh, Southrun pikemen out there on his wings. And then he's got some Serpent Guard, who are 123, but that's just because we're playing on small settings, or not on small settings. We're playing on large settings, so 123 is what they will be on uh, on huge in the upcoming patch. So just so there's no confusion there. So we've got about three, or four companies of the Serpent Guard. Then we have some Mounted Serpent Guard, some Muhad Beast Hunters, Unit of Demons of the Desert, one unit of Champions of Nafra, which I think has the General in it, yes indeed. And then a unit of Trollman of Harad, just one unit however. And then on the other wing he's got another company of the Serpent Guard, so that's all I can really see. Oh yeah, of course. Of course the, the elephant in the room over here, we have a Catapult as well. Not something you see with Harad very often. <clears throat> I find Harad tends to, tends to play a lot of rush armies, kind of like the army that Celtic has. At least that's, that's been my experience so far. And you've seen that a lot in some of my videos, so it's interesting to see a catapult on the field today. But in a team like, game like this, it can actually pay off. Uh, over here we have Balrog of Mor Morgoth commanding Cardolin. He's got some Minas Carthon sharpshooters, uh, Minas Carthon archers, two sharpshooters, and I think two archers as well. Sharpshooters out on the wings, archers in the center. He's got uh, some Royal Court of House of the Rondor, which I th I think these I think this unit is getting uh, a, an overhaul. I, c I could be wrong about that. It could be. And the Arthodane unit, which is getting it, but I know that Chiron Coma has, has um, overhauled one of the two units, either it's the Royal Court of House the Rondor, or it's the Royal Court of House Amline, so you might see a, a different uh, model for them moving into our next patch. Then we have some Minas Gareth and Spearmen, one, two, three units of Minas Gareth and Spearmen, backed up, backed up by three units of Minas Gareth and Swords, a couple units of Mercenary War Chiefs, and then some Mercenary Guildsmen. An interesting army from Cardolin. I get the feeling that there are a lot of hidden units here, maybe some Black Bandits, maybe some Dune Nine Rangers, uh, that kind of thing, but we'll see as the as the battle progresses. Let's pop back on over to the other side of the field, and we have the fourth and final blue team army, that being the Realm of Lindon, being commanded by Apex Peak Keep, which is just peak backwards. I only just realized that. I feel really stupid now. In any case, uh, warden unit here, the Wardens of Harlandon, and a unit of Nolorn Horse Lords as well. Wardens of Harlandon, if you guys are not aware, are a spear cavalry bow cavalry hybrid. So all around a very a very nice multi tool for the Lindon army. Two units here of the four Lindon Marines. I believe two companies of the Four Lindon Archers. He's also got a couple companies of the Four Lindon Guard as well. Mithlon Pikemen, the higher tier pike unit for Mithlon. And we have some Mithlon Marines. Two units of Mithlon Marines, I believe. And uh, a couple units of Mithlon Lancers to round off the cavalry wing. And I am almost positive that there is a unit of Warden's Velostyrian in here. Uh, so we may see some of the, the formidable Lindon Rangers make an appearance in this battle. But that does it for Blue Team. Let's see what the Red Team is packing. Across the fields of Lindon, we have the army of Isengard, be commanded by Eclipse 2500 of the Dark Cloud. He's got some Dunlending Clansmen as his front line. I think just one unit spread out over a large area. One, two, three units of Rukai Archers. 
Uh, some Urukai pikemen, three units, I believe, of the Urukai pikemen, a bunch of Urukai infantry. We don't have their armor upgrades in the field today. Uh, one, two, three, maybe four units of the Urukai pikemen, or the Urukai infantry, rather. Urukai crossbows, one, two, some guards of the Orthanc, and the Isengard ballista, a lovely unit which kicks a lot of butt, and it will continue to do so moving into the next patch. Just might get a little bit more expensive. And then finally, to round off the whole shebang, we have the Champions of the White Hand. Very strong anti-cavalry unit. Elite wargs are nasty, nasty, nasty. Moving on to the Red Team Center here, we have the Army of Mordor being commanded by Crunchdock. It's got some Numenorian Lancers, just one unit. A unit of the Ulog High, which are damn, damn fine. I say it every time. Literally every time. I don't think I've missed this in like 20 videos. Uh, but this is the creation of Crimson Battle Lead. I believe he ported in the models from Loader Conquest. And they have assimilated into Reforged very, very nicely. And we're going to continue to use model uh, the base model for this, the trolls uh, underneath all that armor, moving forward. So you're going to see a, a reskin? A re is it reskin? It's really more of a recreation of the trolls of the White Hand in the next patch. They're going to be using this giant, imposing, and very high-quality tro troll model with some fun Isengard additions. I believe it's going to be based off of the tabletop Isengard trolls, if you guys are curious. Moving on to the rest of his army, got some more gold chosen. Uh, an interesting... I'm not too sure what this is. So I got a unit of Morgul Chosen, uh, Mordon Archers, one, possibly two units of Orc Fodder, a unit of Ballista, so I found a lot of artillery in this field battle today, which is cool to see. This kind of spices things up a little bit. One, two, probably about two units of the Mordon Heavy Maulers, a couple units of the Black Legion of Baudadur. Um Then we've got some Drummer Trolls, and finally, Sauron's Will, unit of Orc Javelins, and I think this is the General's Bodyguard. Yes, indeed, you can see the Nazgul hanging out here with the Temple Executioner's nasty unit. Very, very deadly. Actually, if you want to see their armor upgrade, their officers have the armor upgrade, but this is the, the unupgraded unit, and they still look damn fine. I think that does it for Mordor. Maybe they have some hidden rangers in there or something, so let's move on now to the fourth and final Red Team Army. That's the Realm of Lorien, commanded by Archangel. He's brought some Lorien Spears. I believe two units of the Lothlorien Spears. One, two, three units of Lorien Axes. A couple units of Lothlorien Swordsmen over here in the back. And the rest of his army is kind of spread out all over the place. Actually, you know what? I'm wrong. There's another army to come after this. Apparently, I cannot count. Uh, Lorien, Lothlorien Mounts Company, 1, 2. Unit of Galathrum Nobles. Lothlorien Archers. Two units of Lothlorien Archers. And finally, a unit of Sindar Archers. So a fairly straightforward Lorien force composed mostly of their elite archers. And, uh, and a lot of their elite infantry. Those elite archers are going to have a field day with the Corsairs of Harads. And then finally... This time, it's actually the final army. We have the army of Arthedain being commanded by Apex Coda. He's brought some Wardens of the North, one unit of Wardens of the North, a ton of cavalry, uh, Knights of Anuminas, Royal Court of House Amleth. I think this is the one that's going to be getting the new model. It's it's really cool. Um, it's kind of more like a cataphract almost model, and they're they're all dressed in gray, and it just really assimilates quite nicely into the overall gunmetal gray aesthetic that. Uh, Northern has going on for it. So we've got some uh, four Nestorian Knights there, one, two. A couple units of the United Mounts Company in addition to. And I believe three units of the Evendim Spears and... Actually, four? Four units of Evendim Spears and four units of even of Arthurian Pikemen. A unit of a Numenos Gate Guards and a Ballista. A lot of Ballistas on this side of the field. So I think we're going to see a lot of flaming bolts scything their way through mass enemy ranks in this battle. So without any further ado, let's get into the replay. Hope you guys enjoy it. So naturally, having long range archers and being the closest to their neighbor, Lothlorien is going to begin to open fire on the front lines of Harads. That is mostly going to consist of some Southron archers there, um, and some pikemen as well. I would definitely focus on the pikemen. I think the elven archers will be able to stand up to the uh, to the five damage of the Southron archers with their fairly formidable armor scores uh, for quite some time. But it seems like instead Archangel is going to go after uh, some of the Southron archers. Maybe he's going to soften them up and switch over to the uh, the Southron pikemen. But this is much more of a uh, a threat, especially to the army that Lothlorien has brought. Since they have no pole arms with them, uh, then I, I think the Selfen Archers might be. And uh, Harad here under Corsaro are content to just kind of take it. Celtic is going to fall back with his two units of Mumakil. Uh, maybe try and get them away from the Ballistas. Most certainly trying to get them away from the Ballistas. as Ballistas can send them into a panicked rage if they manage to connect. Uh, and it really only takes maybe one or two shots uh, hitting the mark. So it's a good move there on the part of Celtic. Linden also holding their ground. And so far... Kind of just settling in for a bit of an extended skirmishing phase. So let's go ahead, take it up to two times here, and see what Coda is doing with his army over in the back. 
A lot of his cavalry is shifting over to the uh, to the right wing here. Not a bad idea. Uh, it's going to give them local superiority in terms of overall numbers and, of course, their cavalry, which could potentially be uh, a, a serious threat for the uh, for the forces uh, of both Haran and Linden because Coda's cavalry alone, I believe, outnumbers the entire cavalry contingent brought by these two armies. So that's a pretty significant boost there. And then, of course, there's the Isengarders uh, with their wars nearby that can lend support as is needed. So it may be the strategy here to use all of this cavalry against um, uh, not Florian, against Linden and against Celtic's Harad army and, uh, and try and crush their ground forces uh, swiftly and efficiently. Looks like Mordor might be sending a little bit of help over there as well. So they're really stacking their right wing and indeed it does seem, uh, it does seem like they're trying to set up uh, an oblique order here where they um, hold elsewhere on the line and then try and use one of their wings stacked with infantry or just with forces generally, and then roll up their enemy's line. Continuously, the Lindon archers are exchanging fire with the Isengarders. Those Urukai archers are numerous, and they're not half bad, but against the forces of Linden, they don't really have a whole lot of choice. Interesting formation here from Keep. Uh, both of these units are susceptible to being focused down quite, uh, quite quickly by the Isengarder archers. I probably would have tried to spread out maybe a little bit more or only send the units one at a time, but it could be that he's also concerned about uh, about cavalry problems. So a double line of um, of Harlan on guard getting charged into by units of cavalry. It's it's actually pretty dangerous for the cavalry to do. Uh, loose formation spearmen can be very strong against cavalry charges, so maybe that's, uh, that's the impetus here behind blocking up these forces, although as I said it does definitely make them a little bit more vulnerable to the incoming missile fire from Isengard. Well, what do we have over here? It seems like Arthedain and Lothlorien are abandoning that wing almost entirely, which will be interesting. Uh, if they make a stand alongside Mordor, not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it does kind of give that wing to the attackers, and they may be able to just simply wrap around the uh, the blue team's army and, uh, and really cause a lot of problems for them. So it'll be interesting to see exactly uh, what the strategy is here. The cavalry I can understand, but the entire infantry force... It may be that it's denuded of its cavalry and therefore a little bit, um, a little bit vulnerable. Just one second, guys. Sorry about that. I had my Discord left on. So that's that boop you were hearing. You're not crazy and no one's trying to get a hold of you, so don't worry about it. Ooh, ooh the lag. Oof, nasty. It's a big battle, though, to be expected. Linden moving a lot of their cavalry over to their left wing, most likely in response to the, to the movement of Coda's Arthurian Cav Force, which has now arrived on scene. So I... Maybe we're going to see the uh, the Isengarders begin to uh, to really press Linden here and try to move forward and use their uh, along with their ally use their numerical advantage in cavalry to try and smash Linden to pieces. And it seems like Linden is large has largely fallen back with most of their infantry. Um, Isengard taking some really nice bites out of them with their uh, with their catapult. Great even against uh, loose formation infantry units like this. The Isengard catapult does have quite a uh, significant radius. But now a lot of the Linden uh, Linden archer force is, is quite vulnerable. Very exposed here. You got some Numenorean lancers charging in against the Harlan on guard who are going to try and flee in the face of that. But now Coda's uh, Arthurian cavalry force, ooh, some nasty lag, is going to is going to swing into action. You can see all of them moving forward here. Linden having to move some forward some of their cavalry in response, but I don't think it's going to be quite enough. Uh, they are certainly outnumbered. Wardens of Harlanden can hold their own in uh, close quarters against most of these lancers, uh, but there are knights nearby, and there's just so many of these cavalry that I think. If they stay where they are, they will find themselves surrounded, and that's already beginning to take shape. Got, uh, at least one unit here of the Dune Mounted Company swinging in around behind them. The Wardens of Harlan are going to have to uh, to draw backwards. Well, a lot of lag here. That's really obnoxious. Forlin on Archers, meanwhile, now that uh, their cavalry support has been driven back, are actually going to be broken quite quickly by a nice cavalry charge here, but they're going to find themselves extremely isolated. It's going to be hard for them to deal with. Pop back here across the field. Not a whole lot is going on, except predictably you can see Harad, and uh, I believe this is Cardolin as well under Valorg of Mor Morgoth moving forward and uh, attempting to to surround the forces that have uh, kind of circled the wagons here against them uh, over here near the corner of the map. Meanwhile, over here, Champions of the White Hands, along with the, the cavalry of Arthedain, are busy wiping out most of the Linden forces that were unfortunately stranded out here. Harland on guard have taken horrendous casualties, and the Lindon forces are having to beat a fighting retreat here uh, in the face of such overwhelming odds. 
Tossing their Javelins into the uh, uh, Champions of the White Hands, who would do well not to chase such a unit. Uh, Four Nestorine Knights, and most of Cavalry's forces have pulled back, but Isengard, under Eclipse 2500, seems content to drive forward. But these Mithlon Lancers... In close quarters, they are no match, uh, but managing to kite a little bit, and you can see those javelin volleys being tossed in here against the stationary cavalry unit, which is not using its mobility to try and uh, try and deke some of those shots. They're going to suffer some pretty serious casualties. Down to 15, could see them begin to waver here, and indeed, they break. Very unfortunate. Another attack here from the Old Doran Horse Lords, I think, is the the nail in the coffin for the champions of the White Hand here. So that's a pretty significant loss. Um, both sides looking a little bit bloodied here, but it is certain that Team Red has come off uh, the better in this exchange. The Champions of the White Hand being ridden down within Rulur and Horse Lords under Apex Keep, who have now changed their target. We're going to take a bite here out of the Rukai Archers, who are now more or less undefended. There is a th small, thin line of Dunlendy Clansmen that is moving forward in support. Going to be able to drive those guys back. The Rulur and Horse Lords don't want to stick around for too long. The Dunlendings do have a higher, higher than average cavalry bonus. But their ally, Harad, now under Celtic, have surged forward, and they're going to meet Isengard and potentially sweep away this line of uh, Rukai Archers here. It seems like Eclipse Dark Cloud has flown a little bit too close to the sun and uh, has found himself caught out here by a sudden sally of the Haradrim. Celtic's army moving forward. In Sorry about that, guys. Hopefully that fixes it a little bit. Yeah, it seems to be a lot better. Uh, but yeah, Apex Celtic's army moving forward in no particular order. I'm sure they're going to form up here. Um... Pretty shortly as they meet some heavy resistance from uh, from Lothlorien and of course from Isengard over there on their left. Mordor forming up in the center here to defend the elves of all factions. You've certainly seen it all at this point, I'm sure. Apex uh, Celtic Saradrum Black Serpent Bodyguard trying to move here through the center, getting themselves a little bit caught out of position. Well, there are some stakes there too. They're going to have to be very, very careful. The Black uh, Black Legion of Barandur managing to catch them, slow them down just briefly. But it seems like they're going to use this uh, this hole in the enemy advance here to go after Eclipse's uh, Isengard Ballista. That's going to be a big loss. It's a very, very useful unit indeed. Uh, they are kind of positioned between a couple of stakes here, which seems to be giving Celtic a little bit of pause. Uh, Coda's cavalry coming. Oh no! Oh, that's devastating. That is really, really unfortunate. Oh no, not the knights! No, please, not the knights! Oh. I don't think Coda saw it. He definitely didn't see it. I, these are some of his allies' um, ally stakes as well. Ooh, now they're going to run across there. I think we're going to see the loss of much of the Arthodian cavalry. That's a pretty significant misstep there. Oh, now they're going to circle back. They're just destroying themselves. That is devastating. There is still a little bit of cavalry support here. The Black Serpent Bodyguards are going to have to contend with. Uh, a significant number of elves and orcs, and uh, some spearmen and some Numenorean lancers mixed in there as well. Ooh, this could be this could be the end for the Black Serpent. So they don't get out of there quickly. Yeah, Keltex definitely realizes the uh, the danger that he's in, and immediately tries to pull out as quickly as possible. Mumakil surging forward. Now we get to see the good stuff. Ooh, they're gonna have a field day with the Isengarders. Boom, baby. Isengard is going to fall left and right. Let's kick it up to normal speed here and just see what kind of what kind of chaos they can cause. So it looks like some of the pikes are actually taking a significant toll on the Mumikill. Um, one of the things that Mumikill are quite weak to is halberds and pikes. So you don't necessarily want to throw them into them from the front. But it seems that this has had the effect that Celtic desired. He's now broken through the Isengard lines into the back. Uh, there is some defense there in the form of some Urukai pikemen. Eclipse definitely is aware of the Mumikill's weakness to pikes, but they're just going to push right through uh, and not give these these pikemen an opportunity to attack them back. Meanwhile, that second unit of Mumikill hammering the lines of Mordor, and Mordor has no such defenses. Mordor does not have pike units. They do have some halberds, but they are not present on the battlefields. So they're going to be easy prey for those uh, for those giant beasts of war. Meanwhile, all across the line. Apex Celtic, alongside his ally, I believe the second Haradrim army is in here as well. Corsaro's uh, Haradrim army trying to to get in here and surprise Coda's uh, Coda's Arthurian forces. I think that might have been Celtic's uh, Celtic's general getting cut down by some pikemen and some other enemy units. But as I was saying, Corsaro trying to catch Coda out of position. Coda is able to, however, rapidly reform. And now, we got here. The, oh, the Arthurian ballista, however, is going to be caught out. 
So that's a lot of money there down the drain. And uh, Corsero is going to, to deal with them quite quickly here. The charge from his Serpent Guard holding them in place with his um, with his Herodrum Spearman. And now a general fight pretty well across the line has taken shape. Mordor's got their, their troll drummers exactly where they need to be. A lot of Mornan archers here exchanging fire with their enemies, but there's still another reserve army over here. And in fact, most of Corsero's army is is lagging quite far behind. And then of course there's uh, there's Cardolan here. So Coda and um, and the Mordor player are very precariously placed here. Coda and Crutchnock, I think, are going to have a difficult time trying to hold back their enemies. The remnants of Coda's cavalry, however, have circled back around, and they uh, they are doing their best here to try and scatter some of the Haradrim advance units under Corsaro. You can see the Haradrim spearmen were driven off quite swiftly. The Serpent Guard now moving in, but it looks like they'll be taking on the Phalanx from the front. So at least for a while, until many of the reinforcements arrive and this formation begins to crumble, just due to the sheer weight of enemy numbers, the uh, Coda and uh, and Crunchbox Doc's Mortar Army, I think, will be able to hold their, hold their own for a little while. Over here, the Haradrim have suffered quite grievously. I think both of the the Momokil units at this point are running amok. I don't know what happened over here. They took a serious amount of damage, maybe from the Orc Fodder, but I think possibly from a unit of javelins that they had nearby. Oh, what do you know? Crunchdog has some non school as well. I'm definitely sure I saw some orc javelins in here. Yes, indeed. I think this was the downfall of the Mumigel. They don't have the throne trait, but over time they will take a toll. It is AP missiles. Isengard, meanwhile, over here against the, the meat and potatoes, I think, of the Linden army with some small elements of Apex Celtics on Haradrim Force over here. They're doing reasonably well. Although they have kind of run into a bit of a slog here against the massed ranks of the Mythlon Pikemen. They don't really have anything at this point to try and just push their way through, uh, or even to outflank them with the loss of their their Champions of the White Hands. So they really don't have a whole lot of choice here except to try and grind the Elves down through sheer attrition, and that's the kind of fight that is always going to favor the Elves. Rokai Archers, however, from, uh, from Eclipse, circling around the rear of the Linden Formation, uh, looks like, yes indeed, there are some rangers on the field today, and they have been activated. A full company of the Wardens of El Osterian. Looks like they have the same idea as Eclipse 2500. They're going to try and get around the Urukai forces, lay some enfilading fire into this massed blob of infantry, and to devastate their opponents. Urukai archers over here doing their best to do the same thing. Mythal Lancers, however, charging them down. And it seems like the Wardens of El Osterian might be moving forward in support as well. Wardens of El Osterian are no joke. A lot of damage. A lot of melee defense, and they make up uh, they make up for their lack of armor with those two stats more than enough, I would say. So the Ukai archers here are not really going to be able to do what they need to do. So not skirmishers, however, are fairly uh, fairly ably placed here, able to toss their javelin payloads into the Forland on Marines. And some Ukai pikemen moving forward to try and back them up. So it doesn't seem like the Mithland uh, lancers here will be able to do the work. I think that. Um, that Peak needs them to do at this point. This flanking movement is well po poised to uh, to deal a death blow to this Linden army. Warns of Elos Tyrion holding their ground. I think they're going to begin to fire directly into the Urukai pikemen or into the Zurukai archers. And what do we got here? Rear shot against Numenorean lancers. It's always iffy. I don't find that I don't find that cavalry units are usually spaced close enough together to be worth uh, using your BP arrows on them. But I suppose at this point it's really more of an act of desperation. Uh, as I'm pretty sure this is the only unit that uh, the Apex uh, Peak ha still has available to him. Rukai Archers opening fire point blank into the Wardens of Elas Tyrion, bypassing that massive melee defense score. Very, very nasty indeed. Let's move over into the center of the of the fight here, where the Urukai have managed to break through. Thieves of Tharbad under Cardolin, however, being mobilized. And this is going to be a tough spot for Team Red to be in. This is exactly how you want to use assassin units like the Thieves of Tharbad. A nice rear or flanking charge into these Rukai pikemen and into these heavier units like the uh, the, the the wardens of of Dunland, nah, the guards of the Orthanc. Worth mentioning that the thieves of Tharbad are also armor piercing, so this is exactly the kind of way that you want to use them. And they should have no problem slicing their way through the heavily armored shelves of those Urukai infantry. Over here, more non infantry taking on some of the thieves of Tharbad with their high melee defense. They are managing to hold their own reasonably well. Backed up here with a little bit of Apex Celtic's army. Sauron's will have been committed in and around kind of the the barrier here being presented by the Mumikel. Might be trying to use them as uh, as shelter from the arrows, which as the from the arrows and now the javelins that are, are raining in. Uh, it seems to be working reasonably well. Over here, 
Apex Celtic's army well poised to break through the red team's center. Ballista being targeted, I believe, by the Cardolan Ballista. And the, the red team is in a lot of trouble over here. However, on this end, the Serpent Guard, they're suffering quite mightily. Looks like Linden's general just went down. That's two generals dead for the blue team. They are kind of winning the infantry fight in a few places, uh, but it looks like Mordor might change that over here on the red team's le on the uh, red team's left wing. Minas Carithlin swordsman about to be in for a world of hurt as those Moranon heavy maulers charge their way into the rear and flank of this heavily armored low melee defense unit. That is Cardolin's big defining trait. They don't have a lot of morale, and they don't have a ton of melee defense. However, they make up for that in armor and shield. But that is exactly the kind of bonus that the Moranon Heavy Mollers are designed to uh, to deal with. Over here we have some reserve companies of the uh, the Southland Pikemen holding their ground for the time being. Once they are committed, though, that's going to be tough. Arthurian is being is being worn down pretty pretty heavily here. And I don't think that they're going to be able to stand up against the Haradrim. Um once they move in uh, in a serious way. Over here, so we've got the Olakai joining the fray, and against the Minas Gerithlin units, they're going to have a field day. That's going to be a lot of dead Minas Gerithlin warriors, Demons of the Desert mixed in there as well. That might help turn the tide. Ooh, I don't know what that was from, but that was devastating. Looks like the Ballista. Somebody's Ballista. It might have been the Orcish one, and that is actually routed Celtic Center, where he was doing so well previously, he was ready to bust through here, and I think maybe Isengard might have their Ballista online as well. Yes, indeed. And that has proved to be a serious hindrance to the uh, to the infantry fight here for Team Blue, so a huge route in the center. Let's move on to the other wing and see how things are doing. Cardolin has moved... really hard to tell who's on what team at this point. Cardolin has moved in against Isengard, and Isengard is being surrounded and crushed here. Apex Celtic moving in with some of his Hashari Shadows now out of ammunition, helping to scatter the remnants of Isengard. Myth on Lancers over here, breaking down the Isengard skirmishers. It seems like the Wardens of Elastirian are now out of ammunition, and they dealt a pretty serious blow, I think, to uh, to the Isengard army. I don't think we're going to see too much from Isengard at this point. The Isengard Ballista now locked in, in deadly close combat. Corsaro has broken through and managed to silence it, although... Has to be said, it definitely they definitely got their their money's worth out of that siege machine. I think the Urukai pikemen here are really the only unit left. Uh, there is still something resembling a front line, but it's not going to hold out for too much longer. Cardolin is coming in in a big way, and the Isengarders will soon find themselves surrounded. And I think that's going to be the end of them. It'll probably be the final action that Isengard army is able to fight. Celtic's army over here backed backed up with some Munich Gritlin uh, warriors, warriors are managing to break their way through but now the elves I, Arch, Archangel's Lothlorian army which previously hasn't seen a whole lot of action now moving into the center here try and pick up the uh, the fallen rifles of their of their Mordor comrades and staunch the bleeding so that their line is not completely compromised Lothlorian spears have moved in against the forces of Cardolin and some demons of the desert. The demons of the desert are really the only thing that's holding the elves of, uh, or rather the, the forces of Cardolin in place. Still got a couple of Olakai in there, though they are slowly beginning to fall. I don't think we're going to see too much more from them. Cardolin's army arriving when they did is a big, big problem for Team Blue. Archangel is doing his best here, uh, as is Coda with his Wardens of the North. Not too sure what they're shooting at, but look at the reserves that they still have available to them. Champions of Nafarat, Trollman of Harad. It's going to be a tough fight. They certainly have more reserves than their enemies. Although, out of nowhere, some Sindar Blade Masters and the Lothlorian Sword Masters being uh, maneuvered into position. Arthedain's pikemen have held up so long against incredible odds. I honestly thought that Cardolin would be able to, to, to break their way through, but apparently not. Cardolin's forces are actually suffering a significant setback here. As are uh, the remaining forces on this, on this right wing of Corsaro 93. It seems like maybe the red team might be able to pull it back. They seem to be winning on that wing, but they have certainly lost over here. And now Cardolin has finished off Isengard, along with what remains of of Linden, which is, to be fair, is not a lot. They are now moving around the line, looking to uh, to sandwich what remains of the of the red team. So let's go ahead, kick things up into into full speed here. 
and see exactly how they managed to deal with this. Some cavalry here under uh, under Archangel, ten units of Law Florian Mountain Company, trying to hold back the thieves of Tharbad, play for time as much as they can, and it seems like some reserves are being mobilized. In fact, I think that's what the Swordmaster units are going to be uh, going to be used for almost exclusively. Got some Temple Executioners over here as well, a ton of nasty two-handed sword units. And still some cavalry from Archangel as well. So he's moving in both in the center and on the red team's right wing to try and stop the inexorable advance of the of the blue team. Beautiful charge here. Look at this. This is sexy. Oh, I hope they I hope they get that charge off. Ah, oh, come on, Archangel, do it for me. Nope, it seems like the initiative is gonna be given to Cardolin here. Lothlorian Swordmaster is gonna get countercharged. By the mercenary war chiefs. These are Tharbad moving in there as well. That could be decisive. They do have fairly high melee defense. The mercenary guildsmen, they are going to get absolutely massacred by those uh, two-handed sword units. Lothlorian Mounts Company, not too sure why they're falling back. Ah, I see. Linden moving in around the lines of the Elves of Lothlorian. It says that they are being defeated, but honestly, give it time and these units will pull it back. Yeah, you can already see it start to happen. Ooh, is that some demons of the desert? Yes, it is. It must be. I see those units being tossed around. Arthurian Swordmasters really hard pressed. If they had only gotten that charge off, this would have been far easier. Far more in favor of the Elves of Lothlorien. It looks like the Lothlorien General just got cut down. Some reserves being mobilized as well in anticipation for this line falling apart. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more even now. Ah, Javelins, Muhad Beast Hunters. And that flanking movement from Linden, really putting uh, putting a pin in any hopes that the red team had of maybe pulling this back. Arthurine Pikeman from Coda moving in as well. Glathrum Nobles now joining the fray. Things are really tense over here on the right wing. This is really for for all the money in a lot of ways because you can see that Archangel's uh, reserve forces have done extremely well elsewhere. There are of course a few hurdles, some demons of the desert still nearby, but they have greatly, greatly thinned out the uh, the forces of both Corsaro's, Corsaro 93 Taradrum army and Cardolin. I don't think there's a whole lot left of Cardolin on this end. Although it is worth mentioning they do have a ton of skirmishers, but their infantry force has largely been defeated on uh, on this right wing here for Team Blue. What do we have over here? A lot of cavalry. Some of Archangel's Mountain Company trying to get a piece of those Sashari Shadows under Celtic, which I'm sure he is... Uh, Maneuvering with with great adeptness into the weak points of his enemy's forces Pikeman here and uh, what remains of Coda's forces have squared off against this flanking movement Although it's still really close I mean, it says victory is certain for these guys But honestly, they've lost about seven units in the time it's taken us to fly across the battlefield rear charge However from those Hashari shadows might change that They don't have the greatest charge bonus They do have a decent attack value though Managed to kill a few of those Lothlorian swordsmen. Ooh, what do we got here? Archangel shutting down this unit of Muhad Beast Hunters. It's probably going to be enough to rout them. Uh, maybe. Preventing these uh, these deadly Beast Hunters from being used to devastating effect. Nice rear charge there from uh, Coda's Mountain Company. What remains of them in any case. Great teamwork. Routing that thread off the field. Got some Harland on guard left, however. They're not going to be quite so easy to charge into oblivion. Red team holding it down. You've got to give it to them. Mercenary War Chiefs now breaking off. Mercenary units tend to be known for their lower morale scores. It will be getting a little bit higher in the next patch, but it won't be the same as professional troops. Kota countercharging with his Avendim Spearmen, trying to overwhelm the Thieves of Tharbad through sheer numbers as they are being surrounded by the Sindar Blademasters at the same time. Looks like a unit of Mercenary Guildsmen that previously was routing, but somehow managed to find their courage. Now charging back in, but they're, it only hangs by a thread. The slightest setback could send that unit fleeing for the hills. They're steady now. That'll be an interesting fight. Galathrum Nobles moving in for a flanking attack. That might send the Mercenary Guildsmen howling back uh, back to the red line. Sindar Archers, along with some Lothlorian Axemen, managing to break a significant contingent of Cardolan troops. 68 Minas Grithan Spearmen. A lot of Southrum Pikemen as well. This might just dash the blue team's hopes for victory. Although we'll see. I keep forgetting about the skirmishers from uh, from Cardolin. They're being held in reserve. Trollmen of Harads and some Minas Grithlin spearmen, however, pushing forward. Champions of Nafarad, along with those Southron pikemen who are in reserve. 
having now been committed to the fray at a very opportune moment. Pushing their way through. Maybe the blue team can still pull this out. It's really hard to say at this point. The Thorny Mountain Company getting a little too close to the Mython Pikemen here. Ooh, that's nasty. Harlan on guard moving in in support. Seems like the blue team are well poised to crush the center of the uh, of the red team army. This really seems to be where most of their forces are, are still concentrated. Archangel's victorious bladesmen have cut their way through Cardolin, but at fairly signif significant cost, mostly due to the missile units. Mercenary and war chiefs have now found their courage again, perhaps for the promise of more money. Thorian Swordmaster is not going to give them a chance to rejoin the fight, however. Now it's their turn to get a charge in, and the mercenary war chiefs are going to be on the back foot. That's going to hurt. Well, surprisingly, not as much as I thought it might. But still, those elite units, they'll do very well for themselves. So the Minas Gerithlin units still wavering. Ooh, anything scary sneezing near them would send them running back towards the red line, but it seems like they're going to be able to hold here. And they're going to outflank these Lothlorian Swordmasters, who might have won that fight, honestly. Counter charges, especially for uh, for shock units, it's it's really important. Charges in general, I should say, not specifically counter charges. It seems like now they've been surrounded, and that's going to be the end of them. They might get some support over here. Wardens of the Wardens of the of the North, Lothlorian Swordmasters. Well, they do still have a few threats to deal with. This is a really close game, 95 to 79 so far. Galathrum Nobles fighting against champions of Nathrite. Honestly, the Galathrum Nobles have really good attack and melee defense scores. I think if they weren't being surrounded here by the uh, Demons of the Desert and all these AP units, they they might be able to win that fight against the champions of Nathrite. Yeah, I can see. Defeat seems certain for them. Galathrum Nobles are no joke. Cinder Archers over here fighting against Line Infantry and some uh, fairly depleted unit of Trollmen of Harad. Nazgul beaten down these Trollmen. That's going to be no problem for the Nazgul. They, their attack far outstrips the meager defenses of the Trollmen. Their big advantages, their numbers, and their uh, armor piercing, which against a high melee defense unit like the Nazgul, they cannot be stunned like other infantry can. It's a big deal. They also cause fear, which could maybe send these Mithic Rithlin units howling, uh, howling for the hills. South, not Southern Executioners, Temple Executioners holding up a pretty significant force force from the uh, from the blue team. Ultimately, I think they will be overwhelmed. Quest our archers, I wonder where they're shooting at. Maybe at the, the lone knight of Anuminas. Not even a knight. More of a squire bearing the standard. I think we'll do too much to him. If on pikemen have been defeated, it's really just small pockets of resistance at this point. Harlan Guard holding out reasonably well against some of these about ten Hothlorian swordmasters. to see how that works out for them. Over here, some more, some axemen and some swordmasters have come in. I think they managed to rout these spearmen again, but the spearmen have returned, along with a, a small contingent from the catapult crew. I don't know if the mercenary war chiefs will be able to stand up to this for too much longer. Even The elves might even just cut their way through all that remains. 92. Oh, this is such a close game. Uh, these spearmen still moving in. Ah, uh, yeah. This is definitely going to go to the blue team, though. Look at this. These units haven't even fought. There's a little bit of cavalry back here as well. Yeah, Cardolin, Balrog of Morgoth is going to be able to win this for his team, no matter what happens on that infantry line. But still, a damned, damned nice game. Oh, some breaking here. Oh, a lot of these Mithic Rithlin units now running for the hills. South from Pikemen moving in, however, to try and, and maybe tip the scales in their favor, back in the favor of the blue team. Temple Executioners, though, they simply will not die. Surrounded by AP Pikes and Spearmen, horribly outnumbered, they have somehow managed to hold their ground and almost cut their way out of that encirclement. Very impressive indeed. Shameful display here. Miesgrath and Spearmen fleeing while their allies still fight. Lothlorian Axes, small numbers of them, but still significant. I think this is going to be the end of the Blue Team's infantry. They're going to lose the infantry fight, but with all that they have remaining, it's not really going to matter too much, I think. What do we have here? Ah, the Grithlin Spearmen. Looks like the... That would be Corsaro's. Corsaro 93's general. 
just fell to, uh, I think that was the Nazgul. Uh, Florian Axe is here. Naz not the Nazgul <laughs> carrying on a long tradition of assassinating enemy generals. Um, but these Miskarth and Spearmen getting countercharged here by the Lothlorien Axes and the Swordmasters. Sucks for them. But the Minas Carithlin, uh skirmishing forces are going to open fire here, and these elves are going to be in so much trouble. I would be surprised if very many of them made it back to the uh, to their allies. Galathrim Nobles, again, the elites here have just performed so well for the red team. Cut their way out of some pretty impossible situations. I think most of the remaining uh, blue team uh, infantry forces have been scattered. Just take a quick look here across the battlefield. Just scan the carnage that happened. A beautiful fight. I would say that the blue team had the advantage for most of it, but the red team turned that on its head quite a few times and really had me guessing about who was going to be able to pull this out. But yeah, I think we're going to see one last brave, glorious charge through a hail of arrows. We're going to last samurai this. The Wardens of the North charge forward. I think some of the Lothlorien units are engaged against the Minas Carithlin units, trying to, just trying to keep them away. Royal Court of House the Rondor, however, are nearby, and I think this is where the Lothlorien units are going to, to meet their untimely end. Wardens of the North over here, getting shot to pieces. They have no other choice, however. Let's see if the Nazgul managed to make it in there. Oh yeah, they are not going to do. They are not going to be able to. Temple Executioners, Nazgul, Wardens of the North, they are all going to meet the same sticky end. Some Sindar Blademasters also charging the enemy lines. Oh man, look at those Temple Executioners fall. It's such a shame. This unit held out so well for so long. They had some pretty incredible odds, but I think this is a bit of a tall order for them. Oh, look at them just pour in. This is a massacre. All oh, the Nazgul are starting to drop now. I don't think they're going to make it. Oh, they're trying to reform, trying to keep moving forward. Oh, it's just too much. And there goes the Mordor General. Oh, they are going to get their, their blades wet, though. glorious charge there by the Nazgul and the remaining Temple Executioners, but they can't cut their way through all of this. Two Nine Rangers back here as well. That might have been why the infantry fight was just so close, and that the blue team ultimately lost it. They had, like, this is probably like three, four thousand Florins, maybe, just sitting here in the back, but it worked out. A cunning plan indeed. Royal Court of House the Rondor rear charging what remains of the Mordor Infantry. A meager two Temple Inquisitors. Or Executioners, rather. Well, they managed to take down a few of the Archers. Not enough, though. One Nazgul, one Temple Executioner. Ooh, nice. Getting another kill. Let's see what the ultimate count ends up being. Very close. 10% of each other, that's... That's not bad. And honestly, most of these most of these units are, are skirmishers that were held back, so. Everything else that went forward, nobody came out of this. Very, very few people. What do you know? There's actually some Minas Carithlin spearmen here. These guys have been routed like four or five times. They keep coming back though. Testament to their ferocity. It is, however, the elves that are now the ones that need to flee. Unfortunately, none of them are going to be none of them are going to be spared. Cardolan is taking no prisoners today. Royal Court of House the Rondor dealing with what remains. I think the last oh no, the Nazgul and the Temple Executioner are still cutting people down. Let's see what happens to them. Ooh, cap charge there. Maybe this will be the end. There you go. Last Temple Executioner has fallen, so it's just a single solitary Nazgul. I'm surprised he's not getting like a kill a swing here. They're very strong. Oh man. Oh no. His defense faltered. Oh, there it is. This Nazgul's just butchering people. I think they're gonna try and like They're gonna execute him by firing squad or something else. Lone champion of Nafarat moving in. And there you go. The Nazgul is dead. 
Very close game. Very close game indeed. Thank you so much to, Kel to Celtic for sending it in to me. Um, absolutely love... I love games like this. Uh, everyone... There's a lot of different armies, a lot of different factions. You really get kind of... Um, you get a good sense of, of how all the factions kind of play like this. I mean, Isengard, uh, really good at, at formation fighting, run into a little bit of problems with, uh, with being ultimately overwhelmed and surrounded, but um, Apex Code is Arthurian army as well, very cap heavy. That's one of the things that Arthurian tends to specialize in. They're kind of a jack of all trades, but they do have a, a very strong specialization in their cavalry department. Uh, Haradrim, fast, hard-hitting, really strong armies that don't really stand up greatly to, to missile fire. Um, and again, uh, Linden with their pikes and their javelins. So I, I like games like this because it makes such a nice showcase. So thank you so much for sending it in to me. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, watching it as much as I enjoyed casting it. But in any case, my name is Jordan, also known as J Monster. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.